Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance and today I'm going to be discussing when I believe stocks are going to go back up. Today I'm wearing my red shirt in honor and to pay my respects to this brutal market we're in right now. I know I'm young, but I have been investing for five to six years now and this is probably the nastiest market I have experienced personally. I've also heard that same thing come from the mouths of people much older than me. So if you agree with me, leave a like down below because this market is absolutely brutal. But hopefully in today's video, I'm going to bring you a little bit of good news that might ease your mind a little bit. So the title of this video is a little bit interesting. I say stocks are going to go up in 14 days, some amount of hours in some amount of minutes as of posting this video. The title of this video is going to constantly change as we get closer to this catalyst. Right now, when this catalyst is going to take place is 14 days, 5 hours, 18 minutes, and 42 seconds from now. So, what exactly is going on that is giving me a bullish outlook over the next two weeks? Well, on May 11th, which happens to be what this countdown is for, the new CPI data comes out for the month of April. A lot of people are in major fear of this CPI data release, but I for one am not. Before I dive into my personal thoughts about this data release, if you guys are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also, comment down below what stocks you've been buying. I think right now there's just so much opportunity in the markets. And if you're taking advantage of it, you're going to be much better off over the long term. You get to invest in your future self or your inheritance for a significant discount right now. So that's the way I'm looking at this market. Either one, stocks go up from here and my wealth increases. Or two, I get that opportunity to keep buying what I think is going to perform very, very well over the coming years for a significant discount. So yes, the markets right now, they suck. It's easy to get that in your head and make you feel down, but don't feel that way. Right now, the market's problem is that investors are looking for every single possible reason to hit the sell button rather than looking for every single opportunity and reason to hit the buy button. Obviously, that mindset is going to have to change at some point for stocks to go back up. Otherwise, the amount of sellers is going to continue to outweigh the amount of buyers, sending stock prices even lower. So over the next two weeks until the CPI data release, I actually believe that the stock market could be kind of in a chop fest. Maybe it'll go up a percent or two in a day. But within a few days, I fully expect another down 2% or down 3% day. I expect this type of movement because literally all of the current market's problems stem from inflation. And this goes back to the fact that investors are looking for every possible reason to hit the sell button right now. There are so many things in the market and in the economy right now to be bullish about. Record low unemployment. Jobless claims at record lows every single month. Company earnings coming in really positive. In fact, out of the S&P 500 companies that have already reported their earnings, their earnings are beating on average by 8%. But that is still not creating any buying pressure in this market. Instead, the market continues to focus on interest rate increases, inflation running away from us, supply chain challenges, World War III, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, all of these different things are causing people to hit that sell button. I didn't even mention the latest China lockdown because of their new COVID outbreak. Ooh, doom and gloom, hit the sell button. Or even today, Elon Musk going out and buying Twitter caused the NASDAQ to absolutely tumble today, which probably bred even more selling across all the major indices, which should be viewed as a positive catalyst. The economy growing a social media platform becoming bigger and better than ever is viewed as a negative catalyst because Elon Musk had to borrow money against his Tesla share count, which might end up forcing Elon Musk to sell his Tesla shares. Or the fact that Elon Musk won't any longer be able to focus all of his attention on SpaceX, Neuralink, and Tesla. Now he has to focus on Twitter too. Decrease the value of Tesla, and Tesla is a big constituent of most market indices out there. So we see more and more and more selling by the day. 
any catalyst, the markets right now are finding a way to twist as bearish when they very well could be viewed as bullish. But nobody wants to view the bullish side of things right now. They're looking for every single excuse to sell. Now, in that lies a lot of opportunity. Let me discuss with you why I believe on May 11th, when the CPI data comes out, that might be what shifts this mindset for investors. Last month, inflation came in at 8.5% year over year in the month of March. That was a record high, essentially. That caused a lot of fear because basically ever since September of last year, inflation has been running away from us. From 5.4 to 6.2 to 6.8 to 7% to 7.5% to 7.9% to 8.5% inflation. What this has caused, to nobody's surprise that's watching this video, is the markets entering peak fear, uncertainty, and doubt mode. Peak FUD mode. It's forced the Fed to start speaking more hawkish about the economy in raising interest rates much more than previously anticipated or previously guided for. All the Fed is doing right now is basing their projections off of this 8.5% number and the fact that inflation keeps growing and increasing amounts year over year by the month. But in April, I fully anticipate this to change. I fully anticipate that in the month of April, inflation is going to come in at 8.5% or lower, showing a flattening or even a downturn from the 8.5% number we got for the month of March. So why do I think this? Well, for one, new vehicle prices have started to come down as the supply chain has started to work out its bottlenecks. As a result, used car prices have also started to come back down. Furthermore, housing prices peaked and are on their downwards trajectory. Beyond this, even Bitcoin mining rigs have started to come down in cost for Bitcoin mining companies. All across the market landscape, things are cooling off. Things are no longer increasing dramatically in price. In fact, most items are starting to come back down in price. And as a matter of fact, the March numbers, a lot of the reason this came in so hot at 8.5% is because of commodity prices caused by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Oil prices peaked at over $120 per barrel. Right now, they're sitting at right around $100 per barrel. So since March, commodity prices such as natural gas and oil have come down, which is natural deflationary pressure on this reading that is going to come out. Furthermore, the comparison year over year for the month of April is a much more difficult comparison. In the month of April of 2021, inflation was 4.2% year over year in comparison to April of 2020. Essentially, what this means is that for inflation to be more than 8.5% and for inflation to keep running away from us, prices would have had to have inflated 8 0.6% or more on top of the already 4.2% that prices went up last year in 2021 compared to 2020. That is a very tough comparison. So why do I view this as bullish or why do I think this is going to breed some buying behavior in the markets? Well, it's pretty simple. Again, almost every single one of the current market's concerns stem from inflation. Inflation has caused the Fed to communicate that they are willing to increase interest rates dramatically and very, very fast. But if inflation moderates, it gives the Fed a chance to say, okay, let's take a step back. Maybe we don't need to hike interest rates or rug pull so hard to get inflation to come down if it's already cooling off and coming down on its own. In turn, what that does is it erases a lot of the recession concerns that investors have today. Because way more times than not, when interest rates go up, a recession follows. Because interest rates going up dampens the economy, it dampens demand, people spend less when it costs more to spend. But if interest rates stay low and they don't rug pull us at the Fed, the risk of recession goes down dramatically and investors can relax as a result of that. Furthermore, last year when inflation started to moderate and even looked like it was going to come back down, the markets did very, very well. 
For example, the May number came in at 5% in 2021. Then in June, it was 5.4, July 5.4, and then August was 5.3. It looked like inflation was starting to come down naturally. And you can see stocks performed very, very well from the beginning of June until September, returning investors almost 8% over the course of three months. Inflation has a lot to do with the price action in the stock markets in today's world. Obviously, following this moderation in the inflation rate last year, things started to pick up when the new wave of COVID started to hit the inflation numbers, where all of the spending as a result of the next big wave of COVID caused inflation to go back up. As a result of that, let's go back to the stock market spy. We can see that basically ever since then, the stock market has been going down. Now, moving on from the CPI data, let's get a little bit more broad here. What did we need to happen for the markets to start going back up? Well, for one, we needed large cap valuations to fall back down to earth because small caps have been at historical low valuations for months now. Mid caps are the same way, but large caps remained historically elevated at levels we hadn't seen since the tech bubble, since I was born. But just recently, large cap valuations have started to come back down, and they're coming back down very, very quickly. This is because the stock market is absolutely tumbling right now, but it's also because these companies actually are reporting pretty positive earnings, and they're projecting pretty positive guidance when it comes to their earnings. And as a result of this, those two things, the numerator, the price of the stocks are coming down, and the denominator, the earnings projected by the management teams, are usually going up. So that fraction gets a lot smaller, which is what we need to happen. We need the forward P.E. ratios to fall back down, which is exactly what's happening. The valuations are finally starting to crunch back down. Another thing that I see happening in the stock market that I want no business with is investors saying, I'm not going to buy back into this market. I think things are going lower, so I'm not going to buy back in. I want no business with that. And that's for one reason. The stock market right now has historically high, if not record high short interest in it. Meaning that the number of short sellers or people betting against the stock market right now, using leverage even, is at historical highs. What happens when we get that first piece of bullish news? The shorts are forced to cover their positions. They're forced to buy their stock to cover that position. And that breeds more buying because it forces more shorts to cover their short positions. And all of a sudden, there is an abundance of buying pressure with almost nobody selling their stock because everybody had already sold out in the past. And things recover very, very quickly. We can look at the S&P 500. This is absolutely ridiculous. The short volume ratio for the S&P 500 on average over the past, I don't know, two trading weeks has averaged almost 60%. Meaning that of the shares traded in the S&P 500 on any given trading day, 60% of those shares are coming from people betting against this market, betting against the United States economy. I think that's a stupid idea. I'm sorry. But betting against the United States of America is never a good idea. And when you see levels like this, 60%, that should be a bullish indicator in and of itself. So what am I doing? Well, I'm not wasting this opportunity because sure, things might go lower. Heck, I just bought shares of PayPal the other day and a few days later, I'm already down 5%. Nobody wants to be down 5% within days of investing their money into the stock market. That's part of the problem right now. But what am I doing? I am buying stocks because I know for a fact right now things are at a discount. I know for a fact, that's not an opinion. I know for a fact that historically stock valuations are low right now. I don't want any business thinking that things are going to go lower. So I'm not going to buy. If you have that mindset, you're literally risking losing the opportunity of a lifetime to invest in your future self or your inheritance or your kids' education funds because you think things might go lower. If things are at a discount right now and you think they're already low, just go out and buy the dang stock. Worst case scenario, you keep plowing money into the markets and lower your cost basis. But I am not willing to risk losing this opportunity to invest in my future self. 
I don't want any business doing that. And I think that's a big trap that a lot of investors are playing into right now. You know what's going to happen? Stocks are going to have a great couple of weeks eventually. I think right after the CPI data comes out, and those same people that thought things were going to go lower are going to FOMO back into the market. They're going to have the fear of missing out rather than the fear that things are going to go lower. Make a dang decision with investing because those same people that aren't willing to buy into the markets right now might not even be willing to buy into the markets in the future because they just think things are going to go back down. But you know what? People that are buying in this market right now, they're going to make money off of the FOMOers when the next bull market comes. We are going to make money off of those same people that are unwilling to buy at a discount right now and get fear of missing out so they plow right back into the markets, adding to the buying pressure that is already abundant because of the amount of short sellers in this market. I think this recovery is going to be very, very fast. I think the CPI data release on May 11th is the, is the key catalyst to look for. Obviously, this is all my opinion. I could be completely wrong about all of this. But hey, if you agree with what I say, leave a like down below. Comment down below when you think stocks are going to bottom. If you don't agree with me, let me know why you don't agree with me. If you're new here or returning not yet subscribed, please subscribe down below. It makes my day seeing new people come in and subscribe. Uh, with that, have a great rest of your day. Stay blessed and peace out.